Uh, Mr. Donald, I would like to thank you again uh, for uh, your presentation here at ICT Qatar. Uh, everyone enjoyed it. I uh, just want uh, you to share with us a couple of things from your uh, experience in the UK. Uh, first thing, uh, what do you think about uh, uh, what ICT Qatar has to offer right now? Well, I, I think you do have to take little steps to move forward. And it's in terms of the maturity of the use of e-learning in Qatar, I think you've done the right thing. You've launched your portal, you've got some really key content on IT, project management, business skills and so on. But you're gonna, I think you're gonna have to move very quickly into a more sophisticated view of e-learning, which is not just a portal, but which may involve bespoke content. You know, I think what makes people really want to use this e-learning stuff is the more exciting stuff, mm. as opposed to the page turning, you know, let's learn how to use PowerPoint, or, or the international driving license type content, which is good, mm -hmm. but you do have to take that next step because you have to excite people. You know, if I use Facebook or Twitter or YouTube, I use it every day because I'm I like it. It excites me. You know, I'm a, I'm addicted to it. And what you, I think the trick here is to make people addicted to learning. Mm -hmm. But you have to loosen up a little bit. Mm. You have to have less surveillance, less tracking everything the learner does. Have they completed the course? I think you needn't worry so much about completion all the time. Mm. You know, people come to conferences and they, they check out all the time. You know, they feel bored, they go to sleep, you know. Don't worry about people checking out of courses. It's not a bad thing. It's maybe a good thing. And I think the danger with just the portal, just the content view of the world is that it's good but it's only the first step at the bottom of a long stairway. Very good, very good. How do you see technology changing uh, e-learning itself? Well, the big, the big thing is mobile, mobile learning or m-learning. Uh, everyone in this room has a sophisticated mobile device, which is effectively a computer, and there's no absolute standardization. But you have now iPhone, Apple, and then, of course, Android, Google tech phones. Mm -hmm. But the possibility of delivering this stuff straight into someone's pocket is obviously there. You can already get YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and so on. And if you widen that out a little bit to iPads or tablets, that, that's what will excite people. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, everybody here has a mobile phone. They renew, they get a new one every year. It gets better and better and better. We're now right on the cusp of having a device that really delivers good content. Mm -hmm. I think specifically Androids, uh -huh. because web-delivered content for mobile devices is possible. I, I work with a company called Caspian in the UK that does precisely this. It delivers content straight to your mobile devices. Then you can learn at home, you can learn on an airplane, you can do what you want You know, if you've downloaded stuff. And I think that's the big change. If you would give uh you know, uh, leaders and organizations uh, an advice or two, what would it be in, in adopting e-learning within the organizations, since this, since this is what why we're here today? Uh, you, know, you know, when people in organizations, they tend to be too old for the job. Mm -hmm. It's like teachers, you know. When you're a teacher, every year you get, you, you get older, but the kids stays the same age. Yeah. So they, get, they go away from the kids all the time. And that's true in training as well. Trainers get older, but the same young people hit the organization. Yeah. And therefore, there's too much of a gap. You know, the biggest piece of advice is listen to what a 20 or 22 year old's got to say. Regard them as your subject matter experts a bit mm -hmm. from the technology. Mm -hmm. And the people don't do that enough. I have two 17 year old boys. I ask them all the time, all the time, professionally, what I should be doing because they live and breathe it, and I'm always getting older. Mm. So that's the first thing. You have to, in your team, involve younger people. They're gonna take over anyway. Yes. So you may, as well, you may as well ask them now. They're the future managers. The second thing is, uh, is sensitivity to marketing. You know, learning's a product. It's like chocolate, it's like anything else. It has to taste good, be good, but you also have to tell people what it is and mm -hmm. excite them about it. And training departments aren't very good at this. We've had some brilliant presentations here from, uh, from uh, Petroleum and others. You can tell that those people, in the health example, those are people who understand marketing. That's why they've had the success they've had. Mm -hmm. They are selling, promoting, and planning the process for the organization, rather than just shoving a bit of e-learning in. And it's like saying, you know, just saying, let's have a party and hope that people come. Mm -hmm. 
Very good advice indeed. Very good. Yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much uh, for uh, your, your presentation and for coming to Qatar uh, to share uh, your experience with Learn Direct and Epic, of course. And uh, we're glad to have you here. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. All right. Thank you.